To thee we come, O Lord our God. Having confessed our sins to God and asking for his forgiveness, I ask that you please recite with me the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God for your penance for the next three nights, besides offering your morning and evening prayers, that you take one of the three readings as prescribed by the church for this Sunday to reread and to reflect the importance of that message. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into life everlasting. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and with his authority, thus that in me by him I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts. Through Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Ah, sinful nation, people laden with wickedness, evil race, corrupt children, they have forsaken the Lord, spurned the Holy One of Israel, apostolized. The Lord is with you when you are with him, and if you seek him, he will be present to you. But if you abandon him, he will abandon you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and it shall be world without end. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of 
of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Pray. Almighty God, you bless those who seek you and punish those who forsake you. Grant us the grace never to reject your Son, for in him alone do we find our salvation. We ask this through our, the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Josh, would you read today the word of the Lord? The first reading, a reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. As the Lord spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard the one who was speaking say to me, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have revolted against me to this very day. Hard of face and obstinate of heart are they to whom I am sending you. But you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord God, and whether they heed or resist, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that a prophet has been among them. The word of the Lord. Today's gradual, but this people's heart is stubborn and rebellious. They turn and go away. The second reading, a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, that I, Paul, might not become too elated because of the abundance of the revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan, to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I begged the Lord about this, that it might leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses, in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints, for the sake of Christ, for when I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. But today you have rejected your God, who delivers you from all evils and calamities. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Almighty eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Jesus departed from there and, there and came to his native place accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue and many heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Jose and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, 
A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. But the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. Words taken from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen, to you my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, each and every single one of us who have become disciples of the Lord are familiar with some of his sayings. Hopefully, you have a couple of these sayings that affect you personally and which you understand more clearly the personage and the wisdom of God. Today I want you to commit to your memory what the Lord said to Paul. My grace is sufficient for you. You know, in doing the research and trying to understand through the readings of different commentaries, it is believed that Paul may have been epileptic. There are references that are found in the Word of God, in the epistles of St. Paul, in which he directs his thorn in his side. Not too many people knew about epilepsy. Never mind had any type of a cure. And so Paul, who traveled over 4,000 miles during his missionary journeys, was afflicted during his entire ministry. My grace is sufficient for you. You know, my brothers and sisters, besides being a beautiful name for a female, and something that, when asked, is what we say before we have our meal. Grace goes a lot deeper. There is a simple mathematical equation. Faith plus grace equals salvation. Without faith and without God's grace, the message of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, does not become real. We read in today's Gospel that he was not, Jesus, able to perform any mighty deeds there. Why? We read throughout the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the stories of how Jesus went into a town where he gave sight to the blind and cured those who were deaf, were crippled, 
suffered from leprosy and even raised the dead back to life. So why was not the Lord able to perform mighty deeds? The last sentence of today's gospel gives us the answer. Lack of faith. You know, each and every single one of us are not impervious to difficulties and trials and tribulations. And so when we gather in the name of the Lord and we offer our prayers, there are two things that are needed for us to be complete. One is faith. They say when we turn to God, God is always there for us. And so faith, as Paul says, is something that you do not necessarily see, but yet you believe. Grace is defined as God's help. Simple. But to have the, and to be the recipient of God's grace, you have to have faith. My dear brothers and sisters, when we look and we take St. Paul as an example of discipleship, we see that Paul who struggled throughout his entire life before he became a martyr, looked to the Lord with faith to receive God's grace. Paul's devotion to the Lord could be summed up in his love and his devotion to the Lord. For he writes in his letter to the Romans, and he asks the question, and I want each and every single one of you to think in the spirit of St. Paul and a disciple of the Lord. Paul asks, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardships, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? Paul declares, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul, who was a per persecute, persecutor of the church, met Jesus on the road to Damascus. And by that encounter, his life was completely changed. He became the author of 14 books of the 27 books of the New Testament. And so, I ask you, my dear brothers and sisters, you have faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Understand that you have received the grace that is sufficient. For in the power of Christ, we are all made perfect through our own weakness. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen. I believe in one on God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being, but with the Father. Through him and all things he made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious pilot. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Do you not think that a much worse punishment is due? The one who has contempt for the Son of God considers unclean the covenant blood by which he was consecrated and insults the Spirit of grace. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and for the benefit of the holy church. Amen. Let us pray, O Lord our God, be pleased with the gifts we bring to your altar, and make them the sacrament of our salvation. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Throughout all ages of ages, Amen. the Lord be with you. And also Lift up your poor hearts. Let us give thanks unto 
to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his teaching and ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live, giving our lives in service to you and all people. Still hearing his word in our world today, we strive to follow his example and set our hearts on the world yet to come. Therefore, we join this day with the voices of angels and archangels, along with all the saints in the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father, we most humbly pray and ask you, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotted sacrifices, spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would grant us peace and unity in the world and with our bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our prime bishop, and Paul, our bishop, and of all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith, which comes to us from the apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In all your present, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for whom we offer or who offer you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own, for the hope of salvation and deliverance, and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with an honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin Mother of our Lord and God, and Jesus Christ, also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who lived, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of his love, draw them unto himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries in which spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven, to you God, his almighty Father, in giving thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, Again, giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me.
Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer up to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice in the Magdalene host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. We pray this day. Amen. Lord, remember your servants and all those who have gone before us with the sign of faith and who now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, to light and peace, through the same Christ our Lord, amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in your, in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your enemy. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not wing our merits, but pardon our offenses, Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely, freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and following the mind in example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching, and never let us be parted from you, who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. Part, may the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation, though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy. Our saving master, awaken in us a living faith for fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant us who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, for those who will not be receiving the Blessed Eucharist sacramentally, may we now offer an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. We will take the bread of heaven, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise while I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Receive the body of the Lord.
And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, help us who have shared your body and blood to know you through the work you do in our midst. For you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Go, the sacrifice is offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, the unworthy, have offered up in the side of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy, be effective for myself and all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning, through Him all things came into being, and apart from Him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in Him found the life, life with the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, a darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through Him all might believe but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light, which gives light to every man, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. Through his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and we have seen his glory the glory of an only son coming from the father filled with enduring love Thanks. Thanks to God. Thank you. 